Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. It's a beautiful day to create some super cute decorations for your next party or event. Today I'll show you how to make larger than life boxes that look like building blocks and are filled with balloons. I'll show you how to make them with just a few materials, tools, and a cutting machine. These blocks make adorable shower decorations, birthday party decor, or you can even customize a set of blocks to spell out a name. It's easier than you might think with the right tools and materials. You can use my free PDF files to cut these designs by hand, of course, but I'll use a cutting machine today to speed up the process and get precise cuts. And I'm going to show you how to make these boxes from craft board, which is a bit thicker than even the heaviest cardstock. This stuff is not hard to find. You can get it at craft stores and on Amazon pretty easily. Craft board will make these boxes durable enough to be reused over and over. I'll also show you how to cut and add a clear acetate window to your boxes so you can see the colorful balloons or whatever you decide to put inside them. And then we'll decorate them with vinyl letters but we won't be using the regular permanent vinyl this time because I've got another way to make the boxes reusable using removable vinyl. Unlike permanent vinyl, which will stick to the acetate pretty much forever, removable vinyl allows you to decorate your boxes for one occasion, peel it off, and then decorate them again with entirely different decals. I've got a full list of all the tools and supplies, plus links to where to find them in my materials list. The materials list is below this video, as well as over in the project's printable photo tutorial at jennifermaker.com 590. Now, while I'll be demonstrating how to cut one box at a time, you can cut as many as you like. Like these are in stacks of four or three or whatever you want here. I'll show you how to prepare, cut, and put together the letter B box from the baby stack, but you can use the same steps to decorate your own block with whatever letters you want. Now you might be wondering why just the B block, Jennifer? Well, because I do not recommend attempting to cut more than one box at once, as it will get confusing and slow things down. Instead, after you finish cutting the first box in Cricut Design Space, we'll come back and change our letters to the next letter in the word that you're spelling out, whatever the word that is, and then follow all the same steps to cut and assemble your next box. So, are you ready to get started with this awesome decor? Let's start by getting my free patterns that I'm sharing with you today. Step one, get my free letterbox designs. First, download my box designs at jennifermaker.com slash 590. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download for my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top, then click either get a password if you don't yet have one, or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 590 and click the link to download the designs. And if you're not sure how to use these files, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how to download and unzip files. There are two designs in the folder a version of the box without score lines, and a version with score lines that you can use with a scoring tool, which I will demonstrate today. You can use my PDF files to cut these designs by hand if you wish, but I'll use a Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine to cut my pieces. You can also use an original Maker, any Explore series machine, the Cricut Venture, or another machine that uses SVG or DXF cut files. These files can also be sized down with the Cricut Joy and Joy Extra and filled with candy or other small items. Step 2. Prepare your letterbox design. Let's start by adding the design to Cricut Design Space. Click the Upload button and then click Upload Image. Click Browse and find the box template SVG file with score in the name if you have a scoring wheel or a scoring stylus to use. I'll demonstrate with this version so I can show you how to set the score lines. If you do not have a scoring tool, you can use the design with no score in the file name instead, which uses dashed cut lines to create creases. Once you've selected the best design for you, click Upload and then select the new design under Recent Uploads and click Add to Canvas. Click the Ungroup icon to ungroup the design. 
I recommend always ungrouping a design after you upload it as it will be grouped by default. The design includes six frame pieces that will make up each side of the box, along with tabs to connect them all together into a cube shape. Inside each frame piece, we'll attach a piece of acetate, but we won't use a Cricut to cut that. I'll show you why later. If you're using the file with score lines like I am, find the first group of two layers in the Layers panel and select the layer containing just a line. You'll know you found it when the color box turns red. Change it to score in the operation menu. Now hold down the shift key on your keyboard to select the box piece layer and its score lines layer and click attach. Now your Cricut will know to create a crease line on that spot on that specific layer. Continue on setting and attaching the score lines for the rest of the 11 pairs. Now let's add a letter to the first panel. Click the text icon to add a text box. Type the letter you want. I want to make the set of four boxes that read baby. So I'll type a capital letter B. I recommend using capital letters because they're more consistent in the amount of space they take up. Plus they'll look more like true building blocks with capital letters. Let's make it a little bigger so we can see it better. Click and drag a corner of the letter's bounding box to resize it. You can change its color to match your vinyl, but if you do, be sure to change it to a different color than your craft board mats, so Cricut Design Space knows to cut it on a separate mat. If you're using white vinyl like my example, keep the letter black so Design Space doesn't confuse it with the white craft board mats. Now click the font dropdown to open the menu. There are some really nice free options available, which you can see by clicking the filters icon and checking the box for free. I'll also check the box for single layer cutting because I know they'll work best with adhesive vinyl. You can play with different font styles, but I like the letters to be on the thicker side so they'll fill the shape more evenly. You could also use a typeface that you've downloaded by clicking on system and searching for it. I'll search for one of my favorite fonts called Transcity. If you want to use the same font, go to jennifermaker.com slash transcity dash font to purchase it. And then click the X to exit the font menu. Resize the letter to fit inside one of the square openings. It should take up the middle space of the frame, but not be so big that it's too close to the edges. This size looks great. To save time choosing the font and size for the letters on the other panels, click the duplicate icon to make a copy of the letter. I'm going to leave the top and bottom of my box undecorated, so I'll duplicate my example letter until I have four of them, one for each side panel. Now I'm ready to cut my B box for my stack. With the right machine selected, click Make in the upper corner. On the prepare screen, make sure the correct material size is selected for your materials. I'm using 12 by 12 inch materials, so I'm good to go. Click back on the first mat and then click continue. Selecting the first mat like this will put it to the front of the cutting queue, which will help us keep track of which types and colors of materials to use. On the make screen, your first mat will be a frame piece. Click Browse Material Settings and search for Craft Board. Select it, click Done, and then select More Pressure. Since there are a lot of craft board mats here, checking the box next to Remember Material Settings will apply these settings to all of your mats of the same color and save time. But don't worry, I'll show you how to set the correct material setting for the vinyl when we get to it. If you're using the no score version that uses dashed cut lines to create your creases, you're ready to begin cutting. But if you're using a scoring stylus like I am, you'll want to insert the stylus into the clamp now. If you're using the single scoring wheel, insert the scoring wheel into the clamp when prompted. Place your first mat's craft board on a green standard grip machine mat and use a brayer to make sure it's really well adhered. Check that your premium fine point blade is clean and in the clamp and load the mat into your Cricut and press the flash and go button to begin cutting. 
When it's finished cutting, unload the mat, flip it over onto your work surface, and roll it back to release the craft board. Continue cutting the rest of your craft board mats. You'll end up with six craft board squares left over from the middle of each frame. Don't throw these away though, you can use these for future projects. When it's time to cut the letters, change your material setting to premium vinyl removable mat with more pressure. Check the remember material settings box to apply it to the rest of the mats. Now place your removable adhesive vinyl pretty side up on your green standard grip machine mat. I'm using colored vinyl so it's easier for you to see what I'm doing, but be sure to pick the color that works best for your theme. Use your brayer to adhere it evenly to your mat. Then load and cut your vinyl letters. Once the letters are cut, use scissors to cut the vinyl carrier sheets apart so each letter is separated. And then use a weeding tool to carefully peel away the extra background vinyl. I like to work from larger to smaller sections during weeding. If your letters have counters, that's the middle part of the letter, poke your weeding tool into them and gently lift them away from the design. Here are what my cut and weeded pieces look like. For each box, you'll have six square craft board frame pieces, 12 craft board tab pieces, and four cut vinyl letters. But what do we stick our vinyl letters to? Well, that's where the acetate comes in. While you can use your cutting machine to cut your acetate pieces to 10 and a half inch square to fit inside the boxes, I found it much quicker and easier to cut them with a portable trimmer like this. In fact, I can cut two or three pieces of acetate in the time my Cricut cutting machine can cut just one. Plus, there's no loading or unloading. Sometimes the old way is the best way. And did you know the paper trimmer has a guide extension for longer materials? It lifts out from the left side and locks in place. So pull out the guide extension on your trimmer and place the left edge of the acetate at the 10 and a half inch mark on the extensions ruler. And then press the acetate up against the top guide to make sure the cut will be straight. Hold the acetate in place and lower the fold down ruler with the blade onto your material. You can press down on the ruler to keep the material in position, just don't get too close to the blade. Use your other hand to press and drag down on the blade and draw it down the straight line in a smooth motion. There we go, a perfect cut. Then lift the ruler and rotate the acetate 90 degrees so the longer section is ready to cut. Line it up the same way, it will just be shorter at the bottom ruler. Then repeat the cut and you have a perfect 10 and a half inch square. This leaves three quarters of an inch overlap for attaching the acetate to the craft board frame later on. Trim five more sheets of acetate to the same size, one piece for each side of each box. Step three, assemble your lettered box. Use a weeding tool to lift the corner and remove the clear protective film from both sides of one of your trimmed acetate pieces. Set the acetate aside for a moment. Lay one of the square frame pieces on your work surface. There's no obvious front or back until we attach the acetate so either side is fine. Apply a thin line of craft glue around the inside square opening, about one quarter inch from the edge. Don't use too much or it might show when you put down your acetate. Lower the piece of acetate down onto the glue, then smooth it down with your fingers to adhere it well to the frame. If you leave any fingerprints, don't worry. We'll clean the acetate later before applying the vinyl. Continue on removing the protective film and gluing the acetate sheets to the back of the craft board frames. Once dry, flip one of your assembled panels over so it's face up. Cut a piece of standard grip transfer tape that is slightly larger than the letter that you'll apply to that side. Remove the backer from the transfer tape and hold your transfer tape in the shape of a taco or a U-shape like this. Stick the bottom of your taco onto the middle of your vinyl letter. Then smooth the transfer tape over the decal from the center outward. Then burnish it down using a scraper tool. This helps transfer the vinyl from its carrier sheet to the transfer tape. 
Trim the transfer tape and carrier sheet so there's an even border all the way around the letter, approximately one quarter of an inch thick. Gently bend the vinyl letter in half in one direction, then make a small crease in the center edges on both ends of the transfer tape. Do not crease the vinyl itself, however. Now bend it in half in the other direction and make creases in the centers there too, just on the transfer tape. Grab your machine mat and make sure the plastic cover is on it to keep the stickiness covered. We're going to use the grid to position the letters. Place the crap board and acetate square face up over the mat. Then clean the acetate with some alcohol and a lint-free cloth or coffee filter to remove any fingerprints, lint, or debris that might interfere with applying the vinyl. Try not to get your crap board wet, however. Once the acetate is dry, position the frame so a full 9 by 9 inches of the mat grid is visible through the acetate. Check that your positioning is right by lining up the creases in the transfer tape squarely in the center of the acetate at the four and a half inch mark. There we go. It looks perfectly centered to me. Now let's apply the vinyl to the panel. Remove the backer from the vinyl letter decal. Line up the creases at the four and a half inch marks again and use that taco method I showed you to place the center of your decal onto the center of your acetate. Use your fingers to smooth the tape from the center of the vinyl outward. This helps remove air and gets a nice, smooth application. Take your time and use a scraper to press out as many bubbles as possible. Gently peel back the transfer tape, leaving the vinyl and the acetate. Set the transfer tape aside, sticky side up, so you can use it again. It's already in the shape of your other letters. If there are any stubborn or unsightly bubbles that you can't push out, use your weeding tool to poke a tiny hole in the bubble to let out the air and then smooth it down with your scraper. You shouldn't see the hole as much as the bubble once it's smoothed down. Continue on applying the rest of your letters to your assembled panels. Now it's time to add the tabs. Two of the panels will have four tabs and two of the panels will have two tabs. Grab a panel and two tab pieces. Use your scraper tool to help fold each tab at a 90 degree angle on its crease line. Each tab will have a long, thin, rectangular shaped side, and the other side will have a more angled tab. We'll attach the rectangle shaped side of the tabs to the back of each panel, so turn the panel face down. The letter will look mirrored, but it should be right side up. Take a tab and with it pointing up like an arrow, apply craft glue along the entire length of the long rectangular shaped side. Adhere the tab along the top of the panel, making sure it's as flush as possible along the edge and not hanging off either of the ends. Now attach another tab the same way along the bottom edge and two tabs to the back top and bottom of another panel. Then adhere four tabs to two more panels on the top, bottom, and each side. When they're dry, grab one panel with four tabs and one panel with two tabs. Place the panel with four tabs face down on your work surface. Take the panel with two tabs, turn it face down, and make sure the letter is pointing in the same direction as it is on the first panel. Remember, they'll look reversed because the panels are face down. On the left tab, apply craft glue to the outside of the angled tab. Adhere the glued tab on the first panel to the frame on the inside right of the two-tab panel. Be sure the edges are as flush as possible or your box might not have flat surfaces. Hold it in place until the glue fully sets. Now grab the other panel with four tabs and make sure the direction of the letter matches the other panels. Apply craft glue to the outside of the angled tab on the left. Adhere the glued tab to the inside right of the two tab panel, making sure the edges are flush. Hold in place until the glue fully sets. Roll the attached panels into a boxy tube and apply craft glue to the outside of the angle tab on the other side of the first panel. 
And then adhere the glued tab to the inside of the two tab panel on the other end. Again, make sure the edges are flush. Hold in place until the glue fully sets. Your four panels are now a box with no top or bottom yet. Let's add those now. Turn the box on its side so the bottom opening is facing you. Find the blank panel that will be the bottom of the box. Bend up the bottom angled tab and apply craft glue to the outside. Slide the blank panel underneath the tab and when the edge of the panel and the crease in the tab are lined up, push the glued tab down onto the panel. Bend the panel up to make sure the edges are flush, then press the glued layers together until they dry. Attach the remaining three bottom tabs the same way until you fully attach the bottom panel to the box. Now grab your last panel, which will be the top of the box. The top of the box attaches the same way as the bottom, but let's attach just one tab for now. Apply craft glue to the outside of an angled tab, and then push the top panel onto it, making sure the edges are flush. Once it's dry, you'll have a hinged lid to your box. You'll want to keep your box open until you're ready to fill it with balloons. I recommend leaving the top panel open until the day of your event so your balloons stay inflated and looking their best. When it's time, blow up or use an air compressor to fill your balloons with air, not helium, and drop them into the box. If you're using 5-inch balloons, you'll be able to fit about 8 to 10 balloons inside. Once it's full, you can make the box refillable and reusable by applying a glue dot to the remaining three tabs. Then close the box and press the edges of the panel into the tabs to secure it shut. Step 4. Show it off. Here's what my finished B box looks like. Didn't it turn out so cute? And here's what the whole set looks like. These are fun as single boxes or to spell out any word you like. Just repeat the same steps for each additional box. Step 5. Customize it. If you love this project and want to customize one with a fun frame or designs other than letters, I have a way you can do that through my Advanced with Jennifer Maker program. You can get an exclusive toolkit that I made and learn how to create your own customized frame edges with a special step-by-step -step video that shows you the whole customization process. The Advanced program helps you advance your crafting skills by teaching you how to make these popular designs unique and special through tutorials and templates, as well as give you advanced access to my vast library of designs, projects, and resources. I may or may not be accepting new members into the Advanced program at the time you see this video, but if you're interested, go to jennifermaker.com advance to learn more and see how it all works. Didn't these boxes turn out so cool? A cutting machine makes it so easy to cut multiple materials for projects like this. Not just quickly, but precisely too. And I love how the removable vinyl makes these so versatile and reusable as well. You can peel off these letters and replace them with new ones in different colors, different typefaces, and fill them with different balloons or whatever you want. They're really a fun decoration for lots of occasions and will hold up really well if stored carefully. And remember, if you need help, there's reference photos in the tutorial over on my blog at jennifermaker.com 590. And also don't forget that the instructions and toolkit to customize your panels any way you want is over at jennifermaker.com slash advance. Now, if you have any questions about working with craft board, vinyl, your Cricut machine, or anything else craft related that you think I can help you with, please let me know. You can leave your question below this video or come ask over in our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. Share your photos too. I love to see them. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.